Hello, my name's David Johnson from West System International. Today in this video, I'd like to pass on some information, very valuable information, for anybody using a West System epoxy. Epoxy resin has revolutionised boat building and repair and renovation methods throughout the globe. Epoxy construction for renovation or repair makes a boat more water resistant, lighter, more durable, Consequently, there's less maintenance involved. With over 50 years of continuous improvement and innovation, the West System Epoxy is now the chosen epoxy resin for just about every boat builder around the world, whether it's new build, renovation or restoration. And it's suited for a wide variety of surfaces. Wood, GRP, steel, concrete, it will work with every type of fibre reinforcement, glass, carbon fibre, Kevlar or aramid fibres, and it can be used for bonding, filling, fairing, coating, laminating and sheathing. Very, very versatile. We created the West System 101 Mini Pack to offer first time and small scale epoxy users all the epoxy products and accessories they need for basic repairs and maintenance around a boat in one small, convenient, cost-effective pack. The contents are fantastic. Within the pack, you have two fillers. You have the 403 microfibers, perfect for making wood joints, a very high density filler, immensely strong when mixed with West System Epoxy. And you also have the low density filler. This is perfect for making a rough surface nice and smooth, in other words filling it prior to sanding it fair. It's also incredibly good for making lightweight fillets in a small sailing dinghy or small motorboat. You have three measuring pots which are calibrated so that it's very easy to meter out the correct five to one ratio. Three of those. And you have for your own personal health and safety, two pairs of nitrile gloves. You have two syringes, which are also very, very valuable for metering out the resin and hardener mix at the five to one ratio. Excellent for very, very small amounts of mix. You have two West System mixing sticks. These are polypropylene mixing sticks. They have a radius end for creating a fillet and they have a chisel point on the other end for cleaning up after yourself as well. They can be reused for quite a number of times. If you look after them you can break the cured West System epoxy off by flexing them and then throw away the waste and reuse these. Very very good indeed. And then of course you have the 105 resin and you have the 205 hardener. On the packaging you'll notice that there is a sticker on the hardener around here which gives the batch number and it also gives the use by date. You'll find that the same is true on the resin. There is the batch number and the use by date. Both of these products the West System 105 resin and the 205 hardener have a two year shelf life from the moment we manufacture them. Also within the pack you have some fairly comprehensive instructions and these are a kind of very fast, fast route through the West System uh, brand of products. If you require more information look on our website, it's a fantastic source of information. very important to have a good environment to work with. Your workshop needs to be clean, dry, free from dust. If you can wear a t-shirt comfortably, that is around about the kind of environment you need to be working in. You're not too hot, not too cold, and you'd feel if the, if the environment was damp, and you'd also feel if it was dusty. Very important. If you're working outside, you can tent an area off and bring in some localised dry heat. It's very important that you use a dry source of heat. So not propane nor diesel heating, 
both of those methods create a lot of excess moisture in, in, the, in the environment. And they will really, really compromise your work. They'll create lots of amine blush and they will compromise the bond between layers of subsequent coats of West System epoxy. And the first thing that we would want to do is prepare ourselves for working with West System epoxy. And that involves wearing some durable gloves. Very important to avoid skin contact. If you do get skin contact with uh, the resin and hardener mix, it's very important that you don't clean it off with solvent. If you use solvent, it will force the resin and hardener back into your skin. If you get epoxy on your skin, wash it off with copious amounts of soapy water or our West System cleaning, hand cleaning solution. It's very important to mix the West System resin and hardener at a 5 to 1 ratio. You can do that by weight or volume. So small weighing scales are fine, but for very small amounts, these syringes that are supplied in the mini pack are perfect. But it's a very good idea to mark each one with an R for resin and an H for hardener so they don't get cross contaminated. And that way, we can then mix up um, a very, very small quantity. In fact, we can mix up six millilitres. Really perfect quantity for very small repairs on a boat or perfect for model makers. I'll just use the syringe to draw some material into the body. Five millilitres of resin. and one milliliter of hardener. Really handy gauge here is the 30 milliliter mark. So if we meter out the resin up to 25 milliliters and then add the hardener up to the 30 milliliter mark, we're gonna get a 30 milliliter mix exactly at the 5 to 1 ratio. If you do that fairly accurately, you'll always get good results. Now I'm being very, very accurate here. So I'm getting my 25 millilitres of resin and my 5 millilitres of hardener. It's important to mix this, uh, the resin and hardener mix thoroughly. It's very important to get a completely homogeneous mix of the two materials. They look very different together. The hardener has a, a slight amber colour and the resin has exceptional clarity. It's important that you mix these together because without that you cannot guarantee that West System will cure. It must be mixed thoroughly. We suggest that you mix for three minutes. Make sure that whilst you're mixing, you mix right into the corners of the mixing pot. It's very important that the next day, when your mixed epoxy has cured, that you roll the pot and break out the waste. And if you see a small residue of uncured resin and hardener mix in the bottom of the pot, you're not mixing sufficiently. Very, very good check on your own work, a bit of quality control. Now I've mixed this up and a really good question to ask is how long will I have before this starts curing? Well actually this amount will cure, will start to gel, which is the onset of the full cure, in around about 15 to 20 minutes at about 20 to 22 degrees C. Now you can extend that working time by decanting the volume into another pot and creating two smaller volumes. A really good way of extending your working time by about five or ten minutes. <music> Surface preparation is very important. Surfaces need to be clean, dry, 
free from dust, oil or any contamination, and well abraded. Plywood tends to have a release agent uh, on the surface. A very good idea to sand plywood and ensure that you've removed all the dust before you bring the bond together, either for a joint or for a fillet or for lap strake construction in a plywood dinghy. Surfaces like teak need to be cleaned with acetone and free from dust and abraded also to lift the wood fibre. This technique illustrates some of the processing of stitch and glue construction on a small plywood dinghy. Stitching, the stitching part is done with uh, electrical cable ties, generally that's, that's the, the method adopted nowadays. So we stitch the panels together Pull them nice and tight and that really tensions up your, your two opposing panels. And for this demonstration I'll just cut the, the end of the zip tie away. Now one of the techniques involved in stitching glue is to create a fillet. A fillet is a cove of thickened epoxy that is a, becomes a structural component of the whole boat construction. It's a method of joining panels together in a very, very lightweight, efficient way. And for that, we need to use our West System resin and hardener. But on a small dinghy, we can use um, our low density filler. Our low density filler is a very lightweight filler, really intended for filling and fairing. But on a small dinghy, this will create a very lightweight, very strong fillet that is actually stronger than the surrounding plywood panels. Now to make this thickened mix, we want a really robust thickness. We target viscosities within the West System technical uh, information as syrup, ketchup, mayonnaise and peanut butter. That's very easy to understand. Syrup is just the resin and hardener mix. Ketchup is a little bit more filler added, mayonnaise a little bit more still, and peanut butter is really thick and capable of, of standing upright without slumping. In fact, it will stay on your mixing stick upside down, and that's how, a very good test, that's how thick it wants to be, that's how you test for the correct viscosity. We need to add our filler to get us to our peanut butter consistency, and we do that by adding a little bit more than twice the volume of filler to the mixed epoxy. And you can see here that I have a roughly twice the volume. Tip that straight in. And you'll instantly think, I'm going to struggle to mix this together. But if you persevere, I always find that if you just push the mixing stick in to start with, then the filler powder doesn't fly away. It's important not to breathe this in. Just spend a bit of time. You have to have some patience just to blend the two together. And very quickly, we start to get a mix that is very, very firm, very much like smooth peanut butter and suitable for making our fillet. You can see now it's actually starting to get nice and stodgy. And you can see from that almost impossible looking blend of filler and resin hardener mix, we've now got almost instantly a very nice smooth but very very stable filler mix. You can see how this hangs on the mixing stick and doesn't fall off and it creates nice peaks that don't, um, that don't slump.
very important because we don't want our fillet to slump into an odd shape. Fillets are really very much part of the aesthetic of a modern wood, plywood, epoxy um, construction. So it's very important to keep them nice and neat. Now what you can do is with a nice clean mixing stick is you can just take a, a nice amount on your, on your mixing stick and just apply that to our fillet joint and we the first step is to get the material in place it's quite a good idea to do this and use up all the material and then come back and tidy it up. That way it will give you far more working time. If you leave this material in the pot, then it's a good idea just to smooth the, the filler mix around the outside of your pot and that will extend the working time just a little bit. Once you've got all your filler mix in place, then it's important that you create a really nice neat fillet we do that by bisecting the angle of, uh, of our panels and also holding the mixing stick perpendicular to the work, like that. And drawing the mixing stick along, putting the waste back in the pot. And we've now got a very neat symmetrical fillet. We need to clean that up. We clean that up with the chisel point on the other end of the plastic mixing stick. I told you that these were very, very neat. Replace the waste, and now we have a very, very neat epoxy fillet. A combination of West System 105, 205, resin and hardener mix, and 407 uh, low density filler. This will make a very, very strong fillet on small plywood dinghies. For more advanced techniques, we would really advocate best practice, a technique that we refer to as two-step bonding. Two-step bonding is very simple. We prime a porous surface with the West System resin and hardener mix and let that wick into the plywood before then creating a fillet. Now to do that with our mini pack, we really need to purchase some West System glued brushes. And two-step bonding focuses on brushing the resin and hardener mix into the porous surface before we use a secondary technique. So we can use that very effectively with our filleting process. And we can brush the resin and hardener mix on and you can see the plywood changing colour as the resin and hardener mix wicks in. Now we would want to do this and then leave the, the uh, the coating to tack slightly and the reason we, we leave the, the uh, coating to tack is that we want it to grip our fillet and not allow the mixing stick and the filler to skid over the surface which is what will happen. So we can go around and prime a work area in 10-15 uh, in minutes, walk away, have a cup of tea, have a break and come back to this in a short while. And what I'd like to do now is reinforce this fillet that I've already made with some glass tape. Again, this is something you're going to have to buy as a separate extra from the mini pack. Again, available at your West System stockist. This is 50 millimeter wide tape, perfect for repairing a mirror dinghy. Mirror dinghies from old were constructed using stitch and, and tape methods and they always use polyester resin. Polyester resin 
is a very, very poor adhesive against timber, against plywood, and it is not very effective when used with glass tape. Epoxy, on the other hand, West System Epoxy is the most amazing adhesive, and it will work with all of these range of powder fillers, and it will also work very effectively with glass tape. Now, glass tape here is um, 50 millimeters wide. I'm going to cut that to length of our fillet here. Now before I apply this, I'm going to brush a porous surface with the resin hardener mix first. And you can see how there's quite a strong colour change in the plywood. Now instead of waiting, I'm going to apply the glass tape straight over this, whilst the epoxy is still nice and wet and use that to wet the fibres out. I'm making sure that all the fibres are nice and, and straight. Then I'm going to apply a little bit more of the resin and hardener mix. Just brushing that on and letting the resin really wick into the fibres. Now this will create the strongest joint between these two panels that is achievable. A fillet and glass tape is immensely strong. The glue line on the plywood will fail well before the, um, the fillet and the glass tape and the West System epoxy will fail. And you can see there I've got exceptional clarity in the glass you can see the wood grain through the glass. That's a good sign that you've wet this out very effectively. I'm just going to stipple some of these edges down using my brush. The stippling is just not letting the brush leave the work. And just removing any air bubbles and consolidating the fibres. You see there that uh, glass fabric is nicely wet out. Now, if you're going to produce very, very professional results, you would want to sand the surface of this, uh, this glass fabric, but if you sand it, you'll end up tearing through some of the fibres and hence destroying some of its material properties. What you really would want to do is leave the surface of this to tack slightly, maybe for an hour and a quarter at room temperature, and then apply another coat of West System to fill the weave of the glass cloth. There is a much, much better way of ensuring a sanded finish here, and that is to use this material, which is called peel ply. Peel ply is a, a nylon fabric that doesn't stick to the epoxy. In fact, when the epoxy is cured, you can rip this away. That's the whole intention of using peel ply, is that you can rip it away from an epoxy coated surface. And underneath this, you will be left with a negative copy of the impression of the peel ply. And that is as good as sanding. It's like peaks and troughs, peaks and troughs. It's actually graded, so it's better than sanding. There's another side benefit to using peel ply, and that is something we refer to as amine blush. Amine blush is easy to remove. You can remove it with warm soapy water, or we have a dedicated West System cleaning solution. Once you've removed it, then you have the ability to sand the surface. If you don't remove it, the waxy bloom or blush will clog your sandpaper, 
and you'll distribute it over the whole uh, surface area of your work. Very, very undesirable because another coat of epoxy won't take to that surface or another coat of paint will be disastrous on that surface. So you must wash an epoxy coating before you sand it. An alternative to that is the peel ply and of course the aiming blush occurs on the surface of the peel ply. So when we rip it away we're ripping off the aiming blush on the surface of the peel ply and leaving a beautifully graded, textured, ready to bond to, ready to apply filler to, ready to apply a paint high build system to surface underneath. So I'm going to cut this peel ply to length It's quite difficult to cut, you need some really sharp scissors to do that. And I'm going to apply that to the surface of my glassed fillet. Yeah. And you see very, very quickly this will start to wet, wet out with the resin hardener mix. Just use my brush just to stipple that down. If it looks a little bit dry, there's no harm in adding a little bit more of the resin hardener mix to the surface. To ensure that it's wet out and it's totally in contact with the resin hardener mix. Just use my gloves just to smooth this down. And there we have a, a fillet that has been primed, the surface has been primed beforehand, so we're using two-step bonding to create our fillet. We've then glassed over our fillet with 50 millimeter wide glass tape, and then we've peel plied that. You could not achieve better results than this method. Very, very strong. Very, very effective. And look how much material we've got left within our mini pack. Our fantastic fillet joint was peel plied. And as everybody says in these demonstrations, here is one that I prepared earlier. And this is just to illustrate removing the peel ply, which rips away quite nicely. You throw this away, you cannot use it again. But you are left with a very, very nice textured surface underneath, which is totally graded and actually better than sanding. This will give you a more powerful abraded, abraded surface than an 80 grit sanded surface. If we were then going to uh, apply another coating, we could do that straight away. The moment we've ripped the peel ply away, we can leave the peel ply on for six days, six weeks, possibly six years, and any contamination will rip away on the surface of the peel ply and leave a pristine, ready to bond to surface beneath. Very important things about finishing uh, over West System. You will need to coat with a very high quality paint finish or a very good high quality varnish system to attain good UV protection for the underlying epoxy. This is true with all the solvent free epoxies that they have limited ultraviolet stability. The surface will yellow quite strongly if you don't protect it with a good quality two pack uh, paint system or a two pack varnish system. So for that we would look at here, removing our peel ply, ripping this away, looking at the textured surface underneath and making sure that that's completely contaminant free, free of any threads from the peel ply. And then we would look at um, applying perhaps a high build uh, paint primer and then a finish um, two component gloss paint. If we're looking for a clear finish, then we might want to sand that peel plied surface we might want to build it up with a couple more coats of West System uh, resin hardener mix 
the West System 207 hardener is very, very good for that. But that's something you learn after using the mini pack. And then we could use a very high quality two pack varnish uh, to surface coat that. To illustrate the strength of our fillet joint, here's another joint that I prepared yesterday actually, and I'll just show you how strong this can be. And if you look at where the failure is, it's within the plywood and not within the fillet joint. You will no doubt ask where you can get a West System 101 mini pack and it's very, very ready, readily available through our stockist list in the UK, through our distribution network throughout Europe. If you need any more technical information, then please telephone our technical services. We pride ourselves on our ability to answer any kind of question, big or small, relating to West System epoxies. Thanks very much for watching this video about the West System 101 mini pack. I hope you found it useful. Visit our website, it will tell you where you can buy one. Thank you. Mm -hmm.